Well, welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us and a warm welcome from TechSoup. And on behalf of TechSoup, we recognize that the work that nonprofits do every day, but today, in honor of Black History Month, TechSoup is featuring three Black-led organizations and talking to the leaders about the work they do and the importance of the African-American representation. My name is Aretha Simons. I'm the webinar producer here at TechSoup. Before we get started, I do want to make you aware it's being recorded and it's going to be emailed to you within 48 hours and you'll be able to watch it on the replay and get some highlights. And before I do, let's talk about how we can engage today. If everybody would go on mute as you come in, you're already on mute. So if you can make sure that you're on mute and we're going to allow the speakers to do their presentation. And after each one, we'll open up questions, Q&A for you to ask questions, but feel free to do that in the chat. If you need the closed caption, just tap on that CC button at the bottom of your screen. And I have a couple of announcements to make. I would love to know if you're an expert in any other area. If you serve, if you're a bookkeeper, even though you're a nonprofit executive director, you might wear multiple hats because we always need um, featured speakers. So take a screenshot of this. I'll pop my email in the chat as well. I would love for you to be a featured speaker. Next month is Women History Month. I know we have three ladies today, but we're gonna do ladies again next month, but we are gonna do men in the future, either May or June. So email me at asimons at techsoup.org. Couple of other announcements and I'll move out of the way, I promise. Grant Station promo, this is, the one time that you can get access to GrantStation for $99 is normally $699. So if you don't have access to GrantStation or you need to re renew on February 14th and 15th, we're gonna have our big sale for $99. I'm gonna pop the link in the chat. And also GrantStation will be here for a webinar to give you a tour of GrantStation. So you can see behind the scenes how to find those grants, how to make sure you're matched with a funder. That's gonna be on February the 8th. I'll drop that link in the chat. Also, we have another highlight webinar coming up, February 14th. If you are interested in getting public data, this is something that's new that we definitely need to take advantage of as a nonprofit. So datacommons.org is gonna share how you can make it easy and possible for your nonprofit to get access and use public data to share your stories so that you can use it to you know, do the work and make an impact in your nonprofit. So I'm going to move out the way. I'm so excited to feature these three ladies. We have Danita Pineda. She is the founder of CARE. I'm going to let her tell you all about her to save time. And I think you'll love hearing it from her. And we have Rhonda Brown. She's the president of the Black Mastermind. And then we have Kiara Moore. She is the CEO of Black and Marine Science. Welcome, ladies. Thank you so much for being here. And Danita, I'm going to turn this over to you. As Danita is bringing up her slides, continue to let us know where you are Zooming from in the chat. We would love to know. I am very hopeful that this is going to work. So you guys just bear with me as we go through. Uh, hopefully you're able to see all of that on screen. Um, I am delighted to be here. As Ms. Aretha said, I'm Danita Pimienta. I am honored to be the Executive Director for CARE. It stands for Children, Athletes, and Artists Involved in Recreational Events. It is a mouthful. That is why we utilize the acronym CARE. And again, just so happy to be here. I always like to um, begin, especially when we're talking about Black history. Uh, everyone has a historical perspective of some sort. Mine uh, is grounded in service, and it comes from my grandmothers, uh, one of whom was born in 1904, and the other who was born, uh, Vera is down in the bottom, uh, was born in 1918. And they taught me so many principles that I utilize in uh, service every day. And, and uh, those principles have to do with making good use of your time and uh, the 24 hours that you're blessed with. And uh, they, they talk about uh, making sure that you educate yourself out of any set of circumstances. And of course, 
service to the community, which is so incredibly important, which is why this organization was founded. And with that being the case, uh, we, we utilize those principles in what we do and in serving our youth and families in the community. Our mission has to do with uh, ensuring that young people obtain higher education. And with that being the case, uh, we do it in a multitude of ways. Higher education, of course, looks different for all individuals. And as you uh, celebrate even in Black history or whatever other uh, months that come around or what have you, every day is a celebration of our youth and of the families that we serve. So we utilize their skill set, uh, arts, athletics, whatever that is. We fuse it with STEM and we make sure that our young people are enriched. And that's pretty much the uh, focus of our organization. We do a lot of different programs. Here are some uh, that we have in terms of uh, what we deliver, and, and there's so many more. Kids are in need <laughs> of a multitude of things that parents just don't oftentimes have the opportunity to give, it, and it's through no fault of their own. They are out there and, uh, and, and working, <laughs> and so uh, it's support systems, it's communities that come together in order to make sure that our young people uh, know that they can utilize etiquette, and they can use their table manners, and they can do all of these other things that are out there uh, to, to make them uh, better prepared for the future and such. And so I know that we as a as a, a entity, as a nonprofit, we stand on the shoulders and uh, the, the service of the unnamed. And so that helps us to try to make sure that these statistics uh, that are out there when it comes to uh, first gen college students that sort of get up there, go higher. So it's not half of the students attending college uh, and they're being the first in their families to do so. We want to make sure that they are able to, to do so much more uh, across the board and that there are more families uh, that don't have to look around and say, oh, this was the first. Remember, Kamala Harris always says, I may be the first, but I shouldn't be the last in that particular um, position. And so we want to make sure that there are a multitude of individuals going on to obtain higher education. And again, it doesn't necessarily have to be college, but we hope that students will uh, go on and go to school. And so we, this is our, an example of some of the things that we've done. We have not uh, gotten 2022s out as of yet, but just as an example, we make sure that we meet the needs of the uh, youth and families, whatever they are, whatever the case, what we were finding, and I don't know whether you have found this as well, we found that young people, they may want to go uh, to get higher education or what have you, but you know what? It's very difficult to study when you're hungry, when you're hungry or when you don't have the proper materials or what have you. So we try to make sure that we meet the needs of the whole child as an organization. And uh, these are just some of the things that uh, my grandmother had taught us and uh, we, we definitely are, are using along the way. Again, as we celebrate Black history, we know that you know we we as a people we came from a mighty long way. We have um, been entrenched in so many facets uh, across the globe, and whether it be from the days that we were brought over to the Sojourner Truths to the Oprahs, uh, we we can impact this this the neighborhoods that we lived in and the people that we serve. And so, with that being the case, I just know that. We walk every day knowing that we stand with and on the shoulders of those who are unnamed, and we don't take that lightly at all. So I, it is my hope that as we, um, you know, use our mission, use our vision, uh, we we're out there, we're, we're doing the work, but that you partner with us as well. We want to make sure that you uh, connect with us, make sure that you you know that we're here, <laughs> know that we exist. <laughs> and just to give you a little bit, you know, Martin Luther King said that uh, he is, who, he who is greatest among you shall be your servant. 
And we truly, truly believe that we walk in it every day. So if you're prepared to, you know, kind of walk in that service thing, come on, join us or join your, your neighborhood, uh, reach out to your community and, and, and make a difference because that is truly what Black history is all about. Remember the people who came from the past, they didn't have 501c3s. They just did the work. And so that is the model that we utilized. And I appreciate the opportunity to be able to share a little bit about what we do and who we are. And it is my hope that you'll join us on this journey as we impact the lives of young people. Awesome, Danita. I wanted to see if anybody else had any questions before I ask you a question. Um, feel free to use the raise your hand option, or if you can't find it, you can go ahead and unmute yourself real quick. Well, Danita, what I wanted to know um, was kind of the primary question we brought up was, how do you feel um, being uh, a Black-led nonprofit founder, uh, being represented in your community? Do you feel like you're getting the resources that you need? Do you feel like you're being seen? Do you feel like you're being heard? I really want to know. I am so grateful that you asked that question, Ms. Aretha. Um, uh, it is difficult. And I'm just going to be transparent. It is very difficult to be seen, to be heard in our community. Uh, it is difficult because we don't always have the resources that other organizations utilize. And so because of that, it seems like uh, you're silent or you're small or you're, uh, you know, whatever the case, you're, you maybe it looks like you're absent, but you're not absent. It's the lack of resource. And I, I don't always think that resource comes in the way of funding. Right. Um, I, I wouldn't even be uh, I'd be derelict in my duties to say, you know, I wouldn't want you to break your ankles, run into care.org and make a contribution. Right. That's that's no. But it's not just in the terms of money. People have an opportunity to really help us, to really engage with us that may not have anything to do with money coming out of your pocket. Can you make a phone call? Can you connect us with others? Can you get us into the room? Can you open some doors of opportunity? Those are things that help as well, and they don't cost everybody everything. Uh, we, I think it's a lot with positioning. And so when what we would hope that we would eventually look like is an organization that serves the community. We just happen to be led by someone who is Black. It, it's it's a substantive difference, and that's the direction that we hope to take it. But we need partners. We we I <laughs> I make no bones about the fact that we need assistance in that area. So if you know someone who can uh, open the doors for your local nonprofit who happen to be black led, open those doors. Do those things. Make sure you uh, make those connections because those things are very important to us. Wow. Everybody's in the comments saying so true, 100%. Oh, great. I'm thank sorry, the screen is up. I couldn't see the comments, but thank you so much for that. I'm going to stop sharing. <laughs> and if anybody else has any other questions, well, I guess was today is hashtag and... transparency, isn't it? <laughs> well, you can go ahead and unmute yourself. Good afternoon. Thank you so much. This is Loretta Williams Grinnell, and I'm the founder and CEO of Supergirl Shine Foundation. And we are focusing on equipping underserved girls with STEM plus opportunities through early exposure. And I just wanted to say thank you. That's it. I really just wanted to say thank you for sharing your transparency and asking that very, very important question, because that is a challenge that we do have as founders and particularly for me as a black woman founder in my space. And because I show up in spaces alone a lot of times in the STEM, STEM world. And so the second question that I have is, well, the first question I have is, is this going to be available, the recording? Because I just had a meeting with a potential partner and shared the same thing with her as a woman who is not of our culture and said that how I need for you to not just come and have a meeting with me, but I need for you to be an advocate when I'm not in the room. And so it just it's good to hear this so I can share this recording with her so that she'll understand how she can do it and share that with her other counterparts. Yes, it is. And um, will be emailed to everybody who's registered. 
Thank you so much. And I just want to add kudos to you, Ms. Loretta. I know what it's like uh, running the STEM program. That is one of the things that is uh, so important, our kids in tech. And it is exceptionally difficult. So uh, we can talk and see how we can strategize together. I'd love to do that. Um, and, and of course, it wouldn't just be a conversation about all the ills because we would be stuck there. It would be how can we take steps and 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 moving things forward so that we're not uh, battling the same thing over and over again. So anyone want to connect on that level, I would love to have that conversation. Absolutely accept your invitation. If you want to, <laughs> we're not going to take over this call. No, no. <laughs> send, me your, send me your email, your phone number. We will connect within the next seven days. Absolutely. And I'll go ahead and um, Miss Aretha, if you don't mind, I'll put it in the chat. Uh, yes, so that absolutely. Can... Everybody put your information in the chat. Um, Thank you. Kiara is actually going to go next um, because she's um, afraid of the noise. She's in Belize, so she's zooming from Belize. So we're going to actually let her share her screen and go next. So, um, Danita, thank you so much. What an excellent job. And welcome, Ms. Tierra Moore. All righty. Hey, y'all. Thank you so much. Happy Black History Month. Um, as we know, being a CEO, you have to be in a lot of different places. So I'm here um, on one of our sites, uh, checking out some coral reefs and mangroves that we are restoring. So yeah, as she mentioned, I'm Dr. Tierra Moore. I'm the founder and CEO of Black and Marine Science. Um, I identify as a Black queer woman and I use she, her pronouns. So Black and Marine Science. Who are we? <laughs> we are a premier organization really aimed to celebrate Black marine scientists, spread environmental awareness, and inspire the next generation of scientific thought leaders. So on the screen, you're looking at the board of directors uh, for the organization, and we were founded in 2020. And so really, Black and marine science uh, came from my own experience as a marine science. So like I said, I have my PhD in marine science. I'm a marine ecologist. And so I study nutrient pollution and how it impacts the ocean and how humans are contributing to that. And so as a marine scientist and as a Black woman, there there was times where I would introduce myself as a marine scientist and people would say things like, oh, you can swim or, oh, do you get your hair wet? And so it was this very like kind of negative experience, like really y'all? And then so as I continued to grow in the field, I really noticed that I was oftentimes the only black person in the room. So I really wanted to change that. And so that's where the organization came from. So now we have a popping team that really does just a whole lot of different programming and outreach to really try to get um, just black people in general excited about the ocean saying, hey, you can scoob. <laughs> Hey, you can swim, you can scuba dive, you can be a photographer, you can do all of these things to really contribute um, to this space we were just talking about STEM. So if you take a look at our mission, um, first thing is celebrating Black marine scientists. So here's just a screenshot of one of our uh, Zoom meetings that we have, but we have a lot of programming. So on the side, you'll see all these different things um, that we do. You'll also see a, a, a barcode that goes to our BIMS TV, which is our YouTube channel. So on our YouTube channel, we have now about 200 episodes of different Black marine scientists talking about their research, talking about the ocean, talking about storms and hurricanes, but pollution and plastics and fish and sharks. I'm um, really breaking it down and making it more accessible. We have these BIMS bites, these little small five minute versions that you can just get, get your, your body filled with all the marine science that you're excited about. We also have kids versions. We have dives, which are longer seminar series where we bring in prominent Black marine scientists across the globe that maybe not get that representation or outreach, but we bring them to our platform and give them a whole hour to talk about the work that they're doing. Um, we have BIMS Reads and BIMS Cares, where we read uh, marine science stories to kids, and then also Cares, where we bring in a therapist to talk about mental health, but also workplace trauma, workplace stress, being the only Black person in your space. Because while we now have this community, we're still oftentimes the only Black person in the lab. So at work, we're still isolated, but we can come together after work and talk about <laughs> and spill the tea. Y'all know how it goes. Um, on top of that, though, we have some large programming where we have our BIMS week, which is a whole week of outreach where we have um, programming, networking, workshops, keynotes, just a whole virtual conference, all about Black people in marine science. We have a tidal wave program where we're actually able able to provide resources for students to take them to scientific conferences because we know that's a barrier for, be a, for people to be able to get their research on a larger scale. 
our BIP week, one of my favorite programs is our actual, is our BIMS immersion program, which is our scuba dive program, where we actually pay to get students scuba dive certified free of charge. So they come with us, come diving with me for the week, get their certification, and then they are actually able to do uh, research experiences like coral reef restoration or mangrove restoration or shark tagging. Um, on top of that, we are scientists, so we do research. We have active research project. That's what I'm out here doing now. Uh, we do outreach in the community. I have pictures of that later. And then we provide all types of paid opportunities to our members. So I mentioned our BIMS TV, our YouTube channel, all of those videos that are up there, we pay those folks as content creators to not just say, hey, come do this work for free, but no, hey, you are a scientist and we value you. Can you do this as a professional development opportunity and have this as something that you can now put on your resume? All right, second part of our mission, spreading environmental awareness. So here's uh, just a snapshot of uh, some of the programming that we've done over the year. This is actually, I think, from 20, our 2020 programming. Um, but as you can see, just different types of, hey, how can you build your brand in marine science? How can you talk about marine joy? How can you talk about what animals or, or how does it feel to be a scuba diver? So really, again, just trying to get all of that information out um, with these different panels and workshops that we host. And then lastly, inspiring the next generation of scientific thought leaders, <laughs> my favorite. We have, um, really I say the next generation is really everybody. So here I am a scientist, but there's my grandma who is now inspiring scientists because she sees my work. And then there's my cousins who are excited about science because of this. So up here at the top, my favorite picture is actually our youngest BIMS member, Addie. Uh, she's 13 years old now. And she actually did an outreach presentation, an outreach day at her school where we sent her some materials, you know, say, hey, Addie, here you go. And she was out there at the school and did a whole uh, engagement on sharks. Um, here in the middle photo is a picture of our tidal wave program where we took these students to the conference. We had a dedicated safe space at the conference and in, in case any foolishness popped off, they knew they could come talk to me directly because it's just not a lot of diversity at these conferences, if we'll be honest. But we had this safe space and then all these folks were funded by the organization to go. Um, down here is our STEM hands camp. And this is a camp that we actually do for our deaf youth in Atlanta. And so they can have access to marine science as well because marine science is for everyone. All right, up here is uh, actually we're able to go to the Essence Festival this year. This was amazing. This is the, one of the largest Black events in America. So if we really want to, you know, get more Black people engaged in marine science, we have to go where they are. And that was amazing because there was just so many folks coming in like, whoa, we do this. This is exciting. Thanks so much. And then at the bottom is just our uh, a snapshot of our, scuba, of our scuba dive program. We had the students under the water. And of course, we had to take photos. <laughs> So a day in the life of me <laughs> is a lot. I can be doing really any amount of things. So like I said, I'm out in the field so I can be out collecting samples or I can be out scuba diving. Um, I also do a lot of talks. I've been able to travel around the world. There's a snapshot of me actually in Africa talking about black, black and marine science because black people are everywhere. So I was able to talk about that work there. Um, I've been featured in several articles, so I give my opinion about the work and also talk about just the state of the ocean in general. And yes, your girl was in Vogue. I always got to put that flex out there because that was just like, whoa, what? <laughs> so uh, when I think about our impact, well, we now have about 320 members in 31 different countries. So here's just a screenshot of the world. And the little pop-up is where all of our members are. There should be another barcode down there if you want to grab that, you can actually sign up right now to become a BIMS member. I'll wait a few seconds because I know everybody wants to join. All right, <laughs> it's also on our website. <laughs> um, or for our BIMS TV, we have about 1.7 thousand subscribers and just about 30, over 30,000 views. And just here's a little glimpse of our BIMS TV. We have ASL on top of all of our episodes to make them accessible to our deaf community as well. All right. As far as money impact, we have raised over $2 million in funding um, in the past two years, which has been phenomenal. I have been in the streets talking to anybody who will listen to me about Black and Marine Science and really saying like, hey, 
we just got to call it what it is. Um, when we look at PhDs in marine science, less than 2% goes to Black people. I am one of them, so we need to change that. Um, our largest funders are the David and Lucille Packer Foundation, as well as the Nature Conservancy. The Packer Foundation just awarded us a large grant, $750,000 to start the BIMS Institute, which will be a research and outreach and communications powerhouse partnering with Hampton University. So BIMS is booming over here doing some large things and so of course we always want to shout out to our sponsors and you can become one of them all righty and then the last thing i would say as far as our impact is that we have really changed the lives of over 500 black marine scientists and then here's just a little snippet of my thoughts the ocean is so important like it's so important it really runs and it's the reason why we're alive so i think what i'm trying to do is basically change how people think about marine science in general. I think that's the problem. It's seen as something lame. It's seen as something for white people. And I'm like, no, marine science is lit. So we actually have a campaign going on right now titled Marine Science is Lit to really change how people think about STEM, think about science in general, because it can be seen like, oh, that's not for us. That's not, that's not what we do. But actually it is. I literally have the best job. I'm literally in Belize right now. I was on a boat all morning. I get paid to go to these islands to be a scuba diver. And so I really want to change how people actually think about marine science and the, just the STEM in general. So just the, I guess the last thought, um, before I started this work, um, someone said to me, well, before I started BIMS, you know, I was always vocal about just being a black woman in marine science. And someone said to me, you know, you're risking your career by being so vocal. And my response to them was, well, I'm risking my life by being silent. And so my, I guess, charge or message today is your voice is your power. And now here we are three years later is that I don't have that same career working in a lab with all white people. I now have a career working and running my own lab and working with black people. So it definitely was a risk, but it was a career move that was vital for me to be able to stay in science, to be able to have the excitement because it was a, there was a time when I didn't have that. So I'm definitely, as you can tell, passionate about this work, but very excited about the opportunity to just engage the world um, about the ocean because marine science is lit. All right, y'all, if you want to have any more information about BIMS, here it is. Like I said, I wouldn't be a good uh, nonprofit CEO if I didn't have our donate link there. It's tax-free. Um, and there is all of our social media. We are heavy on Twitter and Instagram. All of our programs and stuff is on our website where you become a member. And then if you have any questions for me, feel free to reach out. I am definitely very active on Twitter, most of all. All righty, thanks, y'all. That was so excellent. And I'm going to, just a reminder, I'm sending this replay out so you guys can um, get your sc screen share out. They'll put their information in the chat as well. And Tierra, I've always wanted to go scuba diving, so I got to get with you. I have to, I have to. So there are some questions in the Q&A for you, um, Dr. Moore. Um, this is from Black Belt Community Foundation. It says, Dr. Moore, is your organization interacting at all with the growing number of offshore fish farms near Central America and Africa? They are trying to increase sources of food to the underserved community. So actively, no, but we could. <laughs> so these are the types of partnerships and things that we are looking at. And so right now, just because my expertise is definitely based in nutrient pollution, coral reef restoration, um, that's what a lot of our, in biodiversity assessments, that's what a lot of our research is focused on. But we now have BIMS members all over the world. So they can definitely be incorporating other research projects that the communities are telling us about. So please reach out. I think I put my email up there, but I'll drop it in here in the chat. Yes, please do. And Nia says, Dr. Moore, I'm here with my son, William. He's 11 years old. He would like to know what made you decide to pursue a career in STEM and what advice would you give to a young black child who is interested in STEM? Yeah, so that's a really great question because I actually went to undergrad pre-med. You know, I thought you could either be a doctor or a lawyer. I was going to go be a pediatrician. I was taking all these courses and I realized I didn't really like working with kids like that. Sorry. But I'm like, okay, I didn't want to change my major because I was already in biology. So there was these other courses that I could take. And one of them was a tropical ecology course. And I'll be honest, I only signed up because they were going to Costa Rica for spring break. So I was like, oh, free trip. Let's go do this. But then we got on the boat and we were collecting water samples and doing these little experiments. And there were senior scientists there that were instructing us. And so I'm like, 
are y'all getting paid? Like, what is, what is this career? Like, what is this about? And so that's where I was exposed to marine science. And I came back from that trip, changed my whole life. And that's what I've been doing ever since. So I think it was that exposure to marine science and I didn't even know it existed. So I would say for you, young man, um, to really look at that Black and Marine Science, look at our YouTube channel, but also look at opportunities you can be doing in the summer. We offer opportunities in the summer, but also aquariums, your local community to really get involved and see if this is what you like. Because maybe you don't like being on a boat, but you don't have to. You can be do marine science from your computer. There's coding. There's all types of things that you can do. Um, so I would say definitely getting that exposure. And that's why the organization is so important because you really don't see that type of exposure in black communities at a young age. Like I literally had to wait. So I had already decided that I was going to do something uh, before I found out what this field was about. So that's where we're trying to get it um, to kids younger. Awesome. And I see a question from an anonymous participant. I'm going to save your question for last because I want all the speakers to answer your question. And I'm going to, I'm going to save the question so you all can be thinking about your answer. The question is, what advice do you have for young and emerging founders of Black-led nonprofits? So we'll put a pin in that and we'll let everybody answer that. Tara wants to know, um, Dr. Moore, how did you start your own research lab? Talking. I mean, so I think when we started, uh, when we found a black and marine science, there was a lot of, I'll just be honest, white guilt money from 2020. And there was a lot of folks who saying like, hey, we're trying to do stuff. Like we just watched the harbor, like, whoa, I think for the first time my colleagues were like, hey, Tierra, we don't treat you bad, right? You know, like they were like checking in and then I got to say, ha <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. Um, and so that was really where I started to use my voice and say, hey, we need resources to do different types of projects. And so for a lot, for the beginning, there was a lot of this outreach and diversity money, like, hey, let's find Black people and bring them in. But I started changing the conversation of like, hey, no, we need larger resources to um, provide opportunities and training. We need money to build a lab. And I think what I talked about for marine science is that regardless of where the lab is, not only is it predominantly white inside of the lab, it's predominantly white outside of the lab. If you look like Scripps Institution of Oceanography, Woods Hole, these huge research institutions that we're told we have to go to. But if you're in La Jolla, in San Diego, you can fit in the in the in somebody's driveway, and now I have to go work into that lab, and so that's something that we're just not going to fix, no matter how many black people you put in your cohort higher. So we need resources, and we need a space, a lab space for us to go where we can be safe. And so the pitch was, how can we partner with an HBCU, a historically black college or university, to provide them with the same resources that they provide to Scripps and Woods Hole that they've never done before? And so who else to lead an amazing initiative like that than me? And so that was really it. like, hey, how can we put marine science and the resources we need where the people actually are. And so the, the BIMS Institute will be in Hampton, Virginia, partnering with Hampton University, my alma mater, of course. Awesome. awesome. Okay. I lived up that way for many, many years in Norfolk. Thank you so much, Dr. Moore. We appreciate your time. And next, we're going to have Rhonda Brown with the Black Mastermind. And while she's getting ready to bring up her screen, I saw somebody with their hand up, but then they put it down. So if you still have a question, you can do the raise your hand option or put it in the Q&A section. This has been incredible. Lots of comments in the chat from Danita's um, talk topic and then Dr. Moore, I appreciate you guys. Okay, Rhonda, over to you. Uh, can you all see my screen? Yes, we can. All right, my name is Rhonda Brown. I am the president of the Black Masterminds. Um, BLACK is actually an acronym for Building Leaders and Activating Collective Knowledge. And so a group of us got together during the pandemic and we were just looking for something to do. So we were in this group and late nights we were, we were talking, you know, we wanted to connect, grow our businesses, learn and, you know, collaborate. So we actually came up with our first event, which is the Black Friday Takeover. I'll talk about that a little later, though. Um, and then we we just decided to get together and we formed a nonprofit after the, the first event went good. Um, let me see. And so we focus on four pill pillars, entrepreneurship, personal development, tech evolution, and alliance building. So I, with entrepreneurship, we, we focus on like, um, business ownership, um, business spotlights, seminars, 
business sustainability and for pers or personal development, in the African-American community, we have a high rate of hypertension. So we focus on, we're, we're committed to providing resources and information to help educate others on practices for well-being, mental health, um, just all around physical health. Tech evolution is our third one. And we recognize that technology is the future and, and is vital for its success of really any business, whether it's a nonprofit or not. So we're committed to exploring and implementing and leveraging new technology and AI and other tools for success. With Alliance Building, Alliance Building helps us curate the biggest outreach of the year, which of course is the Black Friday takeover. which is a 24 hour event is our biggest one of the year. So from midnight on Black Friday until for 24 hours, we have business spotlights, demonstrations, entertainment, um, where the primary focus is to circulate black dollars in the black community. Um, instead of going out and shopping big name box stores and you know putting all our money out there, not really getting anything in return, we bring everybody together to learn, to, you know, spend within our community. And so ways, ways to get involved, you can always donate. That would be helpful. <laughs> um, and that would help us bring speakers in. Um, it will help us do programs in the community. Um, and also you can help us by sending speakers for the Black Friday takeover, um, coming to speak yourself, help us plan the takeover because it's, it, like I said, it's our biggest event of the year and it's a whole 24 hours straight of nonstop like demonstrations and just you name it, we have it. So we do need a lot of help with that. Um, so yeah, I know it was short. I think I talked a little fast. <laughs> That's okay. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a shout out because I attended your Black Friday takeover and it was incredible. I went to sleep, woke up at two o'clock in the morning, got online. Y'all were still going and it was awesome. Y'all had some amazing speakers. So that was, that's a great idea, the Black Friday takeover. So I want to open this question up that's in the Q&A. It's been burning. I hope you guys have thought about it. I'm going to go in, in the order that you guys have spoke. Danita, then Dr. Moore, and then Aranda. So the question was, what advice do you have for a young and emerging founder of Black-led nonprofits? Danita. Oh my goodness, what an incredible question. And I'm telling you, this is the answer. Know your business. Know business. Take a business course. And if you haven't heard me say, get into business. You A, a nonprofit is a business. If you have never, if you don't think of it that way, just, just stop thinking. <laughs> Think of it that way. It is a business. And because it's a business, you have to know all of the documentation. You got to know how to get there with the state. You've got to know what to do with the IRS. A nonprofit is a business with a federal tax exempt designation. That is it. Other than that, you are running a business. You are running a corporation. Think of yourself like McDonald's. I don't care. Think of yourself as a business. So if you do um, think of yourself as a business, then what you'll you'll want to do is you'll start reaching out. Score. Have you guys heard of score? I hope that you have. Um, use score. Use the small business administration in your area. And because everything is online now, it doesn't even matter if you have a local score. They do things virtually. So you'll be able to re reach out. Go into another state if you have to but reach out and find fundamentals of business because that will save you. 
It will save you so much effort, energy, all of that if you understand how to appropriately run a business. And then secondarily, get into technology. Join TechSoup. Use your 501c3 to join TechSoup and become a member. And by doing so, what you'll do is you'll have access to uh, advanced programming. So your Microsoft licenses that a lot of small businesses and nonprofits are paying for because they lack the information, you can go right to TechSoup and you can get those things. You can get discounted rates on a number of um, other software, even your hardware, FYI, you can get some uh, discounts on that. Use your ask for non and, and lastly, ask for nonprofit pricing on everything that is related to your business. When you don't ask for nonprofit pricing, guess what you do? You pay the full price, and so you don't want to do that. You want to save your money, keep it in your in your nonprofit's pockets. Okay, not yours. Okay, and you'll know that by running a business, um, but separate everything. Do not um, use your 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 personal <laughs> and, and, and co-mingle, none of that. Oh, I did say it was the last thing, but here's one more. Uh, let's get away from the verbiage of saying my nonprofit. Let's move away from that because if it's a business, it is that, it's a separate entity. And yours denotes, you know, a, a little bit of uh, eye raising by the Internal Revenue Service because what they're going to say is, we're not uh, exempting taxes on the funds that are, are, are given so that we can have you be the, the benefactor. So um, it is ours, it's a collective, it's we. Uh, we work together, we do community, you know, things. So, so operate like that. But yes, this is a business and you must run it as such. <laughs> That's my advice. <laughs> Dr. Moore. All righty. Um, yeah, all of that was great. So I won't add, I'll just add something different, I guess. I would say for me, and I is loud now, y'all. Um, no, stay true to your mission. I would say that is the most important thing as a, I would say specifically a Black nonprofit leader, just because there are people who see the work, they want to grab, they want you to do what you're doing for them. They want you to come work over here and do this other stuff. And then things can start getting a little cloudy and you're no longer making an impact in your community or making an impact to the people you said you wanted to make it to. And I'll just give you an example. And again, I don't feel like I'm trying to be disrespectful or anything, but there's a lot of say, oh, could you talk about like minorities instead of Black people? I'm like, oh. Well, if my goal is to change and create space for Black people, why would I change up my messaging? And so if people, if funders want me to change it, then those aren't the funders that I want to work with. And those are the funders that aren't going to support my work and ultimately the freedom and liberation that I would like to see for my people. So I think you just have to be, you have to be clear with that and you have to be able to make those tough decisions like, am I going to walk away from this money because they're going to get me to change something that I don't want to do? And I think as a, you know, as a new organization, especially as one may not be used to like having all those resources it is difficult you start like oh maybe I could do a little something you know maybe I can make it work but it's never worth it I promise you because again if somebody would ask you to change your mission they never supported it from the beginning so why would you really want to work with them and so I just want to just be mindful like because there is money out here that is being dangling for environmental justice work for black-led organizations for all of that now um, but again, like all, all money is not good money. I think we can take some money and we make impact with it, but you have to be clear about what you're doing. And if you're strong in your mission and unwavering, then they won't take it away from you. It's like, all right, well, okay then, <laughs> just do it. And then you just keep getting that impact and more people try to support it. Like, oh, wow, this is real over here. There's nothing fake about it over here. This is some real impactful work that's going to be done. So I would just say, again, understanding what it is that you want to do, why you started the organization. And then I also would say, when you do that, it allows you to be more impactful and more successful. And then you don't fall into that burnout. Because when you start saying yes to everything just for money, you get real tired, okay? Like just tired, sweet. And you can't really engage in the stuff like you finally get a grant for something that you really wanted to do but you're tired because you've been doing foolishness you can't even make the impact that you wanted with the grant that you really wanted so really just think about what is that you want to do and save the time and then you might be sad like dang you really did need that 100k but guess what a million will come if you stay on the right course and so that is really what's going to be working so i'll stop okay Rhonda, that was great thank you Rhonda. All right, and I look, they said a lot. 
<laughs> so I, I mean, I have I have a few things. Um, what, the very first thing is know your why. Like, don't forget why you started doing what you're doing, and don't let anybody get you off that course. Um, second, I would say get a mentor. Um, I know we got one. It was one of the best things that we could have ever done. Um, and lastly, it, we read this book, Who Not How, and that just, it changed everything. Instead of you working on everything, figure out who can help you with that. Who can do it other than you trying to do everything? So. So oh, I see a question in the Q&A, but there was one down in the chat that moved up. So um, just to, for the sake of time, I'm going to go to the Q&A and then I'll try to find one in the chat while you guys are talking. Um, there's some founder and CEO of Sayap in Africa. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Um, how can I ensure that they want to start 15 chapters, 15 chapters in, chapters in 15 African countries to celebrate BHM? Black History Month. Also, we need free STEM curriculum. Where do I get these Africa after school programs? So um, a couple of you work in STEM. They want to know, they want to do something in STEM. They want free curriculum. I'm going to pop the link to our Africa chapter. I'm not sure if you are, if you are part of our Af Africa chapter. TechSoup operates in 236 countries. Why don't you unmute yourself and let us hear you? I don't know if you're in Africa and if you have a um your zoom go ahead and unmute yourself hello can you hear me yes we can i can okay oh my god i'm so happy i don't want this so, this thing to chat to, to end i don't want i'm learning so much and i'm oh. screaming everything you guys are saying i say amen 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 okay amen. so um i live in i live in california and we, I founded this nonprofit. I'm from Africa. I was born I was born in Africa. I am an attorney, so I worked for the UN before for almost ten years. So I went back to my first love, helping, and I founded this nonprofit. We are in fifteen countries, and the STEM program is so huge because helping girls to go in science technology is something that is so big. My dad didn't want us to learn that. So I was kind of stubborn to become a lawyer. My sisters, all of them are assistant secretary, whatever, which is good. But right now we need these girls to be in science. I just opened a STEM program, but it's empty. We don't know what, <laughs> we don't know how to design curriculum that will help them solve local problems. So if somebody has something to share with me, honestly, I will take it. And take soup all the way. I mean, I love this company. They have helped us so much, so much. We so love to Please hear connect us, connect me with whoever you can so that I can continue working. Thank I you. Just, uh, you're welcome. I just put the link to um, one of our chapters in Africa and um, feel free, anybody who wanna share the information in the Q&A or in the chat, excuse me. So, um, an anonymous participant said, what advice do you have for you? Well, we got that, I'm sorry. What advice do you have for sustaining a nonprofit past the five-year mark? Ooh, keeping, keeping and recruiting volunteers. That's somebody with some history here. Anybody wanna chime in? I would love for the nonprofits to speak. So feel free to unmute yourself. Are you asking us? So I can just say, so BIMS was founded in 2020. Um, so we are just hitting three years. But what I would say as far as sustainability is us writing multiple year grants. We say it again, multiple year grants. So when you write that one grant, you write, you're going to put on the same amount of work if you were to ask for one year. So if you could go ahead and ask for five years and say, hey, I'm going to do this for a long amount of time and you get that funding, then you know you have five years worth of funding that's just stored away versus you just writing a proposal for just one year. So I would say when I'm looking at different types of proposals and also when I'm talking to donors now, I'm asking for multiple years of support because why do the same work 
next year. If you support me now, you just need to go ahead and be supporting me, you know, for a long term. And I think that's the kind of messaging you can have when you're talking to donors, like, hey, we're a newer organization. We're focused on sustainability. We want to make sure that I can, you know, have the capacity for my staff for three to five years so we don't have to worry about that. And we can focus on those programs. We can focus more time on, you know, engaging for that. So I would say definitely be focusing on like multiple year grants, you know, spending the same amount of effort on one grant where you can get more money than focusing on like a one year grant. Um, and I'll just leave that. Okay, this is a good question uh, from Diamond. She has a US, Diamond, uh, Diamond has a US based business. How do you ensure that when you're partnering, you don't have infringement? We, we seek mission aligned partners only to our service stakeholders, yet people try to replicate the framework, even with the NDA. So that could be anybody answer that. I would, yeah, I would say members. So we do, we put mem MOUs on all of our work, memorandum of understanding. And so that's like an agreement um, about, it's, it's a contract between you and the partner organization that basically says whatever it is that you're working on, you can't put it out without our permission. It has to be like co-published, co-design. You can't just go throw my face on your stuff without our permission. So it is a really, you know, contract to protect yourself. And you can put any type of language to say, you know, hey, don't use our stuff. Now, as far as people trying to replicate, y'all would say, my grandma say, often replicated, never duplicated, baby. So they can try to replicate. And I guess maybe that's what we're trying to do to provide folks a framework to where they can do stuff better. I'll be honest, because we've seen a lot of stuff that has just been done wrong. So I wouldn't mind if folks start copying the work that we're doing at BIMS. You know, it's like, yeah, please do, please, and stop doing the other stuff. So I would say, you know, you have to really protect yourself by, you know, getting those contracts in place, but also you can say, hey, you know what, maybe it's like, this is what we need. We need more folks and we are actually the blueprint. Um, but you also know that it's probably never going to be done as good as you were going to do it anyway. So you just have to go from there. Um, but I would say, yeah, that is that is that is tough with people trying to steal stuff. So putting an MOU in place could help. And you just have to hope that the contract is going to be, um, uh, you know, people are going to adhere to it because people do breach on that. But can I just back up to uh, one thought I had about sustainability? The sustainability portion actually comes with the business. Uh, if you're set, if you're in a business mindset, you're going to uh, nonprofits uh, tend to give their services, right? You you look for the funding to come from uh, the the grants, like um, Dr. Tierra was saying. Uh, you could also sell your programs. So uh, people charge for them. So if you're a, I don't know, I'm going to call you a science center. A science center will invite um, or will be invited out to schools and the schools will pay for the science center to come out. So whatever it is that you are offering, why not look at direct uh, invoice as a, um, a, a, a revenue stream for your organization, because that's what businesses do. You know, um, you don't walk into, um, you know, your, your salon and they give you their services for free. So whatever it is that you have, are you setting up a model, a template, so that those programs are something that people would consider paying for, as opposed to you providing services that are free? It can't go across the board. I do know that uh, some people you definitely have to provide your services uh, at no cost. Uh, but think about uh, adding in that revenue stream in there for your organization. Nice. So Michael, um, he uses video games to awaken kids. Um, he feels it's the best way to reach the kids with, in high school. Um, and also with them being late to introduce them. He said, I want to understand how community leaders feel about esports education and how many organizations can help, excuse me, and how my organization can help Black nonprofits to connect. Most of these opportunities are going towards white communities. And if our community isn't knowledgeable of this, what can I do to better help educate our community on esports and how it can lead to STEM careers? Ms. Devita. You are in my wheelhouse because we do athletics and arts and uh, we definitely incorporate STEM. It is essential. So number one, you're going to call me because we're going to have a conversation about that. And then number two, we're going to, we really do as a collective, um, it, it, 
I don't want to just put it in a business frame and call it marketing, but it is really just telling people you educate them. You have those conversations. Any chance you get, you drop those nuggets. What are we doing in order to um, have a five minute chat just to say, hey, did, did you think about this? Because if you start putting it in people's hearing and it then it becomes something that others talk about. So it, it has to start uh, pretty organically. Um, if you have a great social media presence, then <laughs> push that out there and uh, start talking with people who are in not only the schools, the colleges, the universities, of course, but hit those um, organizations that deal directly with what you are doing. So if you are um, there and you happen to have someone who uh, uh, deals in the, I don't know the name of it, where you might be located, but if you have an organization that does what you're doing, reach out to that organization. Let them know that this is what you're trying to train uh, students for and see if you can come up with a collaborative effort. Maybe it's a, a once every six months that you bring students together and make them aware on their site uh, if they have those uh, those that ability. You you, you start thinking out of the box. You you put events together. You organize. You let people know that you exist. And uh, I think more people are going to uh, take advantage of it. So uh, please, I hope that you have my information and, and we'll talk about it too. <laughs> information in the chat. I'm also going to send their informa information out with the video replay. But I do want to give you final last words. I'm going to start with Rhonda if you want to say anything um how to reach you or whatever you would like to say and then we'll go to Danita and Dr. Moore last first of all I want to thank you for having us um secondly if you want to get in touch with the black masterminds you can follow us on all social media at the black masterminds or you can go to the black um yeah and look please sign up to help us with the Black Friday takeover. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, Danita? I too want to thank you um, because I think that this conversation is so needed and uh, we wouldn't even be uh, able to come together in a room like this were it not for this opportunity. So I am grateful. I just want to leave you with the thought of uh, making sure that you connect with um, someone, you know, on, on this call today or, um, you know, tomorrow, just stay connected. That is how we're going to move all of these initiatives forward. There's hundreds of us on here. So um, there's a multitude of uh, initiatives that can, can move forward. Let's, let's stay connected. And uh, I, I, I hope that that will help us all in the end. So thank you. Thank you so much and, and enjoy your Black History Month. Awesome. Dr. Moore. All righty, y'all. Yeah, thanks so much. This has been an amazing opportunity um, for me. Please do follow Black and Marine Science, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, but also just think about the ocean just a little bit more. You know, now that you've met me, like, wow, Black people be out here swimming in the ocean. Yes, we do. Connected with the ancestors. I really feel like, you know, on this Black History Month, everybody, every time I talk about marine science, you know, I have to think about our ancestors when they were on those boats coming over here against their own will, and they made a choice, right? They made a decision to jump into the ocean because that was a better freedom, a better future for them than whatever was waiting. And so every time I scuba dive, I just almost feel like I feel a little hug from my ancestors saying, hey, girl, we was waiting for you. And we are here to provide you the answers to solve climate change solutions, to solve racial inequities, but also to bring people together. So again, thank you all so much for this opportunity. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. You don't want to be on screen feel free to stay off screen awesome yay i love it i love it i love it group participation this is beautiful oh my goodness i love it awesome guys i love it i love it love it love it thank you guys so very much thank you all for being here drop me an email asimons at techsoup.org i want to see you become a featured speaker even if we have the same repeat speakers i want to see you Just drop me an email let me know you want to be a speaker Next month, Women's History Month. Let's go, ladies. And then the men, I want you to come too. Have a great day, everybody. Continue doing what you do. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye, y'all. Happy Black History Month. Bye. Happy Black Bye. History Month from the founders Bye. of Black History Month, the Association for the Study of African American Life and History. Check us out on ASALH.org. Dr. Carter, you started it all.
You go, girl. <laughs> Strategic Music Partnerships. Awesome. Bye-bye.